So this is going to be a series on a top 10 Q&A from my live mod 1 and 2 videos based on what people have been asking. Let's go straight into the first part which will all be mod 1 questions. Question number 1. How do I improve the emergency stop I keep locking up the rear wheel? So this is quite a big problem with beginners and a common failing point. Generally speaking, we use a 75% front and 25% rear brake pressure ratio. If the rear or front brakes are new, you may have to slightly adjust this. A lot of beginners don't realize this and the sensitivity of them and apply or slam the rear brakes, causing them to lock up. In comparison, it's actually much more difficult to lock the front wheel of the bike compared to the rear due to the compression of the forks. So with this in mind, don't be hesitant to simply apply more force on the front brake and less with the rear. Also, it's very obvious when the examiner will put his hand up asking you to do the emergency brake, not long after you pass the speed trap, nothing more than a second. So you should almost be preparing to brake immediately after you pass it. As you're anticipating this, it gives you more of a reaction time and you'll be able to stop more smoothly. Don't worry about braking too early as this is very unlikely to happen in the time frame mentioned. Just be nice, gentle and smooth with the rear brake lever when pushing your foot down and there's no way you'll lock it up. Anything harsh or forceful is too much. Every bike is different so I can't give you a direct reference with depth. Practicing at lower than incrementally higher speeds is the perfect and safest way to perfect this. Some instructors even just recommend resting your foot on it and the compression and lean by using the front brakes will allow gravity to do the rest on the rear brakes. As long as you don't roll too far forward relative to the speed you are doing, the examiner will pass you for it. To put you further at ease, you will be given the option to try again if you roll too far forward. But if you lock your rear brakes, you will be given a major and fail. So I can't stress it enough to be gentle with them. If you only gently skid, you will also be allowed to try again. Question number two, how many mistakes minors can you get in your mod one? Firstly, any major will result in a fail, i.e. putting your foot down in any of the balance manoeuvres, which are the slalom, figure of eight, slow ride and U-turn, contact with the marker cone, overrunning a line or not stopping in the right place, failing to complete a manoeuvre, not reaching a minimum speed after your second attempt, and uncontrolled skids all account as majors. You can't make more than five minors. Minors can include not doing a lifesaver, bad or missed observations, not making the correct minimum speed at first time, gentle skidding but correcting yourself, stalling or missing a gear, etc. A lot of people from the comments seem to be comfortably racking up four minors, so make sure you're not making basic errors in observations especially to have some leeway for the more difficult maneuvers. Question three, I keep hitting the cone in the hazard avoidance, not other maneuvers. Any help? If you're having difficulties with the avoidance, make sure you're not looking down at your speed. You should already have a feel for what speed you're doing, but rather focus at the furthest right cone you're swerving into, as the majority clip the cone on the left. You have two attempts at your speed, plus some tolerance, yet only one chance of not hitting a cone. Also, don't be afraid to properly swerve the bike. You will not drop it as long as you don't slam the brakes, especially the front brakes during a bend. The momentum will keep it up. As you come out of the swerve and your bike starts to straighten up, only then apply the front and rear brakes. To further comfort you, the Mod 1 test area contain, contains extra grip tarmac. From my Mod 1 video, you can see how far I was from it even when I was focusing on them. If it makes it more comfortable for you, you can focus in the middle. I'm only advising focusing on the right because it really reduces the chances of hitting the left one as it should push you further out, which according to the examiner I've asked is one of the most common reasons for a fail. For other maneuvers such as the slalom and figure of eight, if you keep hitting the cones or putting your foot down, this is likely due to a balance issue. Best thing to do is keep high revs and to be mostly clutched in for the whole duration. Never use your front brakes for these maneuvers as you will lose balance and throw, it will throw you forward. Only gently tap the rear brakes resting on them to slow down 
and slightly release the clutch to straighten up if needed to go faster instead of opening up the throttle. Always look in the direction you want to head in and not the cone. This is known as target fixation and should be avoided. Also it helps to stay as close as you can to the cones, essentially gently weaving in and out as you have to do less angled and sharp turns each time. Question 4. I'm struggling to make the speed for the emergency stop hazard avoidance on my 1 to 5. Are there any tips? Also, are there any tolerances with the speed requirement? I understand the pain as I've done the A1 on a YBR125. You really need to take the bend as fast as you can, not being afraid to lean the bike a bit. You then should be on second gear coming out of the bend and fully open the throttle until you hit the, hit the speed trap, then you ease off it. It's likely you'll be redlining it and the bike will be screaming, but that's not a problem and the only way really, especially on a more heavy bike. If you're on gear 3, you're simply not going to make the speed. Don't even bother looking at your speed as there's no need to it. There's no harm in going slightly faster than needed. As you can see here, someone took their frustrations to bike chat forum regarding this, threatening to write to his MP and to the transport minister if he failed on this manoeuvre, which I thought was hilarious. Coincidentally, a day after it was posted in May 2011, the DSA implemented a new 5% tolerance regarding the minimum speed. What are the chances? So this meant the 2 km per hour leniency for the minimum 50 km an hour requirement, which is around 30 miles an hour, means you can hit the speed trap at 48 km an hour and only get a minor for it. Not a major or serious riding fault as would previously occur. Anyway, moving on to question 5. Can you overshoot the last cone for the slalom manoeuvre for the figure of 8 if you're running wide? For those that don't know what I'm talking about, it is this cone here. As confirmed by the examiner when asked during my test, you can. Can you go past the yellow, yellow cone, the furthest yellow cone while you're going back on the figure of 8? Uh, you can do, yeah, you should try and keep it in between the yellow. Oh, right. So you can, but not too wide. Yeah. However, if you take it too wide, you will likely be made to go around another time. I just recommend going in with the intention of overshooting it and going through the middle of the cones, as it makes it much easier. In terms of the actual width in doing the figure of eight, I've seen and read that examiners can use their discretion to fail you if you're clearly taking the piss. So keep it as close as you're able to. Remember you're demonstrating that you're able to balance and control the bike. What happens if you fail? It's not a big deal with the Mod 1, you only have to wait 3 working days before rebooking your test. And you will have to pay the fee again. The examiner will usually be helpful in breaking down your result as to why you failed. Failing Mod 1 is not as bad as Mod 2 as rebooking only costs £15. Question 7. Will they cancel your test if it heavily rains? This question also applies to Mod 2. Normally no unfortunately, unless it's properly bucketing down or hailing, even though it of course makes it harder for you. With snow or ice however, they likely will and you will be refunded your fee. They will be more lenient however on certain manoeuvres, especially the emergency stop if it is properly raining. Question 8. I need help with the U-turn. As this is a balanced manoeuvre, you want to use high rev for this, keeping the clutch mostly in, and you want to rest your feet on the rear brakes to slow yourself down, as similarly mentioned with the slalom and figure of 8. Do not use your front brakes. So before you set off, do your observations, then move forward and as left as you can on the white markings, about midway before the U-turn. Do your lifesaver and then start turning by looking exactly where you want to turn to. Properly move your head around. In my tests, I combined the two, which the examiner did not have an issue with, but try to make your lifesaver and eventual head turn when you're turning your bike to see where you're going, two separate and distinct events to make it clear to him. When you turn your head around, initially look to the right of the markings you will stop at. Don't make the mistake of target fixating on the white lines opposite as you will likely overrun on them. As you're almost turned, you want to be looking straight ahead. 
you're like your bike will likely be in the full lock position and remember some bikes will inherently be easier or harder based on their turning circle this is one of the most important maneuvers to continually practice as you can fail so, the test so easily on this by simply losing balance and putting your foot down or overshooting the line question nine how can i practice the mod one by myself while you can't really use the actual mod one test center maneuvering area only potentially with certain schools or instructors if booked if you have your own bike or can borrow a friend's bike it's not too difficult buy some cones and use the dimensions of the mod one setup from the gov.uk website i'll put the link in the description you can place the cones quite accurately with a tape measure and practice the ones you're struggling with an empty car park such as superstore car parks university campuses and industrial estates at night usually work best for this you can do it by yourself legally if you're doing your am or a1 test but the, for the a2 or a category make sure the land you're doing it on does not have public access otherwise you would still need an instructor even on private land for example a tesco car park question 10 is the test different in northern ireland i initially thought it was the same but apparently there are some minor differences as was pointed out with one of them being less space for the slalom and figure of eight i've left the link in the description for the ni direct gov website on the test if you would like to check everything out in full if you're a resident there also if you have done or will do your test in northern ireland and notice anything else different let me know so that's all the mod one questions for now stay tuned for the specific mod two questions general mod one and two questions and also a general questions video